Now, on the record, we are in Jasper, Florida, the final hearing in case number 15-4975. That's WWALS Watershed Coalition Incorporated versus Sable Trail Transmission, LLC, and Department of Environmental Protection. I'm the Administrative Law Judge assigned to the case. My name is Brian Cantor. Can we have counsel make their appearances, please, at the start of the hearing? For William Walsifer, for the cleanup, Your Honor, for the petitioner. Leanne Boone, for the petitioner. Good morning, Your Honor. Richard Brightman from Hopping Green and Sands for Sable Trail Transmission. Um, uh, I have with me my partner, Timothy Riley, also for Sable Trail. And we're also assisted by Fred Brown, who doesn't have a seat at the table. <laughs> <laughs> Judge, my name is Jack Chisholm. I'm here on behalf of the Department of Environmental Protection. Good morning, Your Honor. Sid Bigham here on behalf of the department. <clears throat> and our, we have our corporate representative with us, Ms. Lisa Craven. <clears throat> yeah. uh, just so you know who I am, uh, Your Honor, I'm uh, John Quarterman, President of Walt. Good morning. Will there be uh, any invocation of the rule of sequestration for witnesses from any party? Your Honor, in fact, we would like to waive the rule in, in the in recognition of the fact that this is largely uh, uh, expert testimony as opposed to fact testimony. I believe that the DEP has already indicated they're willing to waive the rule as well. We're willing to waive the rule as well, Your Honor. All right. What preliminary matters uh, do the council have to take up before we begin with the presentation of evidence? Any? Uh, the only preliminary matter at Sable Trailhead, Your Honor, is I see we have a video in the room, and I was wondering if Your Honor would like to give any kind of an instruction as to videos and photography and their use. As long as they don't disrupt the proceedings, I don't have any objection to Mr. Gordon, or? Yeah, yes, Your Honor, if I may. Uh, William Wolsifer, we uh, filed a notice of appearance, myself and co-counsel Boone, uh, over the weekend. Uh, Mr. Quarterman was admitted to represent his uh, coalition. Uh, he will not be, but he is here as a representative of the petitioner. So just, just to clarify Mr. Quarterman's role. Okay. And we have uh, one preliminary matter, Your Honor. I have noticed in the uh, orders from the court that you've uh, stated that uh, Matters relevant to so sovereign land cannot be raised unless statutes and rules are referenced. And I'm, I'm reading the order as, as not excluding those references, but as interpreting that the petition has not yet uh, cited to them. So with that, the preliminary matter would be if, if those uh, matters are excluded by the, by the court's order. Well, I meant that the petition was not sufficient in this form because it did not cite the rules that claim were invalidated or, or invalid. So I expected an amended petition after that that would correct that problem. Well, the, the uh, re-amended petition extends as follows the uh, stipulation. This is the, the court's order, and I, I could be more specific, uh, exclude raising matters relevant to submerged land, sovereign submerged land, if the rules and statutes are cited, I remember. Yeah. And were they, were they addressed in the, the uh, in, new petition? In the re-amended petition, there are references to uh, uh, Chapter 373. There's reference to Chapter 403. And there's reference to uh, Florida Administrative Code uh, 18 and others. Uh, On the petition? Yeah, the Board Administrative Code Rule uh, Chapter 18 would probably, one of those rules would probably be applicable. And Chapter 353 of the Florida Statutes. I haven't looked again, and there wasn't a motion to, uh, a subsequent motion addressed to any infirmities in the petition. So I thought, I expected those issues to be uh, presented today. Thank you. We had a uh, 
the motion to quash filed also early this morning, I think, and uh, related to the testimony of an employee of the Fish and Wildlife Conservation Commission. Are you, uh, they're subpoenaed to appear, I think, Wednesday, and uh, I'd like to discuss that with you. Monroe, the uh, petitioner uh, waives the presence of those witnesses. Uh, there is another uh, matter, if I may. Well, let's let's conclude that one. Uh, council can remain seated as they address me. Um, you're going to inform the uh, council. I think it's, it's uh, Mr. Osborne with the uh, commission. It's the earliest possible moment. Yes, you're uh, on. And now what we going to say? Yes, Your Honor, because counsel has come in to replace Mr. Quarterman, his role is presenting the case, and Mrs. Quarterman is his assistant, we would like to add Mr. and Mrs. Quarterman as witnesses. Well, uh, they probably were going to be witnesses, right? Or what? They weren't listed, but it was contemplated because they would be uh, presenting the case. We'd object, Your Honor. The witness lists have been out for over a week. They never identified Mr. Corman as a witness, even though he could have been one being the representative. Was his deposition taken? No deposition no was deposition. taken given we were at the summer here. Alright, we asked the court to, to recognize that the pro se petitioner was on the word the need to list himself when he would be presented. I would just note that he signed an affidavit saying he was familiar with the I'll probably allow we'll, uh, his testimony. Uh, perhaps we, if we go into areas uh, that might make there, possibly I could change my mind, but right now I'm gonna I'm gonna allow his testimony. Yeah. Uh, now he, he, you said his wife is gonna testify as well. Uh, we would like the opportunity to call up this as a party. All right. Uh, why why wasn't she listed? She was going to assist Mr. Quarterman at his role uh, to help him with the voluminous uh, documents. Well, and in her, in her uh, guilt from the pro se perspective, that would consume their time. And they can have also been under the assumption that if they were presenting the case, they couldn't testify in the case. It would be an improper assumption, an assumption nonetheless. Uh, I'm less happy with that idea. Since I don't know why she wouldn't have been listed as a witness. Mr. Porterman at one point was going to present the case and he thought his wife should be a witness. I can, I can see why he might overlook his own, the idea that he would have to identify himself as a witness, but why he wouldn't identify his wife as a witness, I'm not sure what I think that would be. Uh, so I'm going to say no to that. Thank you. Any other preliminary matters to take up? Uh, Your Honor, um, unless there are other preliminary matters before we uh, call the first witness, we do have some stipulations as to exhibits that we may might want to just go ahead and admit into evidence, evidence before the witnesses are called. And so um, if, if it's okay with Your Honor, we'd like to proceed to, to do that. All, all exhibits for which there will be no objection uh, can be entered now. Uh, offered now. So what do you have? Well, Your Honor, we have a lengthy list of, <laughs> of exhibits um, that are we refer to as the joint exhibit, which constitute uh, the application and its supporting materials, including the request for additional information and the responses to the request for additional information, um, including some supplemental information that was submitted by the applicant to the DEP not in direct response to a request for additional information. And then there are a couple of volumes of uh, internal uh, documents, uh, technical staff reports and the like uh, within DEP that are also part of the administrative record. And we would like to admit the entire administrative record into evidence. And I believe there's been a stipulation to the entire administrative record. Okay. Does that so constitute one large composite uh, exhibit? Joint exhibit one through 12, Your Honor. All right. The constitute what Mr. Bryman just Okay, described. joint one through 12 are admitted. Uh, sir, there, Your Honor, there's a large uh, 
maker box of three volumes to your right. The ones on the floor, I believe, Your Honor. You mean all that, too? <laughs> During the course of testimony, Your Honor, we won't have you actually reaching in there. We have witness binders to the extent we use excerpts from that. We'll present the excerpts to you so you don't have to rummage through those three volumes. Okay. What else? Sable Trail 1355. Um, Your Honor, uh, all the parties have uh, stipulated to the admission of Sable Trail's exhibit, so that would be uh, Sable Trail 1 through 55. Okay, Sable Trail 1 through 55 are admitted. Does a uh, petitioner have some uh, exhibits that are for which there's no objection? Uh, nothing that is not going to stipulate to you. Okay. Do we have evidence? Right. Uh, for which there's no objection. Do you have a list of ones you're The CBs. Do you have a list of ones you're picking up? Your Honor, we only stipulated to a handful of their exhibits, and when they call them up, we'll, we can flag them. I don't know if I have them. Very good. I've got them here, Your Honor, if you'd like. Just a, a couple of uh, CVs that were stipulated. That would be Petitioner's Exhibit VL, V is in Victor. Petitioner's Exhibit VN, again, V is in Victor, N is in Nancy. I think those are the two that I see that were uh, fully stipulated. Some of the others, we've got some stipulations to authenticity from the department, but. The court board didn't catch the numbers. Uh, VL and VN, Victor Lima, Victor November. We're going to have to change those designations. I'm not sure we have, why we have those unusual designations. You'd like to offer them now, Mr. Uh, Wasserberg? I thank you, Your Honor. Uh, yes, we'll offer those at the I, um, I thought there was additional stipulations on the documents. Let's start with the two that have been uh, mentioned by Mr. Bigham. It up. I just looked at the pre hearing stipulation on the exhibit list where all the parties made their objections, and those are the only two documents from the petitioner side where both DP and Sable Trail stipulated to submission. What was identified for, identi uh, for identification purposes is VL Victor Lima is the theme CV, T H I E M E, um, and Victor November, the price.
runs the trial with Tony Westerners. I'm told, Your Honor, that G was also stipulated to be signed in writing, and I do believe reading the joint stipulations will allow for a much broader than for several documents. G, you're talking about the Swanee River Water Management District? Correct. We objected to relevance in the for years. So. So did the department. I do have the witness and exhibit this. No. You know what? That was not it. Yeah, there it is. Exhibit the attorney's witness list. Stipulation. They were exhibits, Your Honor. Exhibit A was the. I have a stapler. Identification of the respondent's joint exhibits or stipulated to? Yes, those are already in. Are those are already in. They're already in. They're already in. It's part of the joint. Never mind. What, what is this? Uh, this format that was used for the petitioner's exhibit, exhibits, what, what was that? Why was that chosen? I mean, Your Honor. Um, we had understood that when the exhibits were submitted, the court would order them, and the court's numbering was going to be different. So we merely chose a numbering that would be distinct from the other party's numbering. Right. I'll probably give them uh, numbers when they come in. And you can just make a note uh, next to the list. You know, the first one I guess is going to be Petitioner's one. Okay. Uh, usually they're pre-marked and I just stay with the numbers. But I think it would be too confusing to follow that format um, that you have. Uh, certainly, if I may, Your Honor, uh, by your right hand, those two black folders are the petitioner's exhibits and they are pre-marked. Okay. All right. Now, with regard to standing, um, I'm, I'm moving off because uh, regarding that uh, treatises and that kind of thing, I'm not sure what I'm going to do with that. Um, the responsibility to make sure that something isn't hearsay is not just council responsibility. Uh, the statute addresses me when it says I shall not make a finding based on hearsay. So I'm, I'm always alert to 
determine whether something is hearsay or not, and the way that's identified does not make it other than hearsay. Uh, so I'm going to have to wait to see what intent and what kind of use the parties are going to make of those exhibits. Because if they're hearsay, I'm going to tell you I think they are, and we'll have to do it. Um, standing. What, what effort was made to reach any kind of stipulations with regard to standing? Your Honor, there was a request made that we stipulate to standing and that request was denied. How about to any facts associated with standing? Not, not to the ultimate uh, legal position, but as to uh, substantial interests or the numbers or anything like that? There were no stipulations, Your Honor. Uh, quick correction, we stipulated that the WWALS is a 501c3 not for profit. And, regist and uh, registered as a foreign corporation to do business in Florida. Okay. Uh, Mr. Walsh, for what, what are you prepared to do today to demonstrate uh, standing? Well, Your Honor, we, we can show the substantial interest of Walls, Florida members being affected, being present, being more numerous and being substantially affected by the proposed plan. But I, I thought there was a more uh, uh, that there was an agreement further on stipulation, a further stipulation on standing that the in the joint step. that there was a, a further agreement that the uh, Florida uh, members are recognized as being represented by the Georgia Parent Corporation and that the Florida uh, registration of the Georgia Parent Corporation to do business in Florida meets the, uh, the entity standard. Uh, no stipulation. We simply stipulated the fact that we recognize they are registered with the Division of Corporations as a foreign not for profit. Effective August 26th. Your Honor, we consider the standing. We just, it's our contention based on, and we reevaluated the position once we saw the exhibit exchange and the witness list, that they don't have a substantial number of members that are substantially affected. And based on the evidence that we think they're going to present, we just don't think they're there. That's why we didn't make any additional stipulations. Right. How many uh, members are you going to place in the witness stand, Mr. Walsh? Florida members, Your Honor? Yes. Uh, we have six or seven, I believe. The membership is, is much higher. Membership is uh, around 40 Florida members. So my evidence will show that there's over 100 members to the coalition. And around 40 that are uh, substantially affected. That's a we have a dozen Florida members listed uh, on the witness list that are affected. Uh, availability of those uh, may not reach all 12. Some are present. And, uh, well, we have others lined up. If there's no stipulation, you're going to have to you have to meet the requirement to establish a substantial number. Is that right? And to that extent, Your Honor, I'm going to revisit that Mrs. Gretchen is the membership 
director you know, has the best testimony on that. All three set number of testimony, I think the membership director would be a prime person to have to share with the court. Well, it does need to be established what the, uh, on the record, uh, the total number of Florida members, I guess the total number of uh, all members, uh, and uh, I made a ruling in a case uh, not long ago that with regard to substantial number of members that the focus ought to be members in the area of the, of a project and that if you try to go to total members instead that, that it would lead to silly situations where you would have to put on a thousand members or several hundred members just to, just to cover a substantial number uh, requirement. So it's possible that I will uh, treat the 40 members as the base upon which to measure substantial. But you're going to have to put on a substantial number of those members. Thank you. Uh, any other preliminary matters? Did you wish to make the uh, entry into evidence of Sable Trails exhibits and the joint exhibits in the prime fishing case? Are you going to put on we, we do have three witnesses to support the prima facie case, Your Honor. Okay. Then uh, why don't you call your first witness? Thank you, Your Honor.